All right, we want to welcome you to BBI tonight. You are here in the classroom. Those will be watching by video. And this is uh, Brother Shoemate's class. I'm teaching for him. He's on a missions trip. I'll uh, be back in a couple weeks, so uh, continue to remember him in prayer. And we're going to begin a study tonight in the book of Ruth, the book of Ruth. So uh, if you'll open your Bibles there. We'll not get much into the commentary tonight, but I do want to give you an introduction and uh, give you a little bit about the book and about uh, the characters in the book and what it's all about. So uh, let's pray, and we'll get right to the lesson. Father, thank you tonight again for the opportunity to uh, get into your book and to glean from your word. Help us tonight, again, to rightly divide the word of truth, that Christ might be uplifted in all things, that he might get glory. And we'll be careful to praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, the book of Ruth. Now, there's two books in the Bible that have the names uh, of women in their title. Anybody know who one of them is? Ruth and Esther. All right, Ruth and Esther. And both of those are good books. Of course, uh, Esther was a Jewish woman who married a Gentile king. And uh, through that marriage, deliverance was uh, brought to Esther's nation. You remember there was a wicked man that wanted to uh, see the Jews hung and killed and slaughtered. And uh, uh, Miss Esther was raised up for such a time as this. And so she uh, uh, turned the tables on the guy, or God did through her. And uh, that was a great time of deliverance for the Jews. In the book of Ruth, we have a Gentile woman who marries a Jewish man. And by this marriage, she came uh, into the lineage of King David. And through this, Gentiles are still blessed today. Uh, we go all the way back again to uh, the promise made to Abraham that... Uh, God would bless them that bless him, curse them that cursed him. And through uh, Abraham, and of course uh, uh, Boaz is uh, part of that lineage, uh, all the nations of the earth would be blessed. So Ruth is a story of love. It's a story of devotion, redemption. And it's set over against the dark background of the book of Judges. I don't know whether you've read or studied the book of Judges, but... Uh, it was a dark time for the nation of Israel. And Ruth was a Moabitess woman. And she forsakes her pagan worship. She forsakes her heritage, her family. And she clings to her mother-in-law, Naomi, which uh, is of the people of Israel. Uh, the Bible says Ruth was faithful in the, in the time of apostasy. Uh, it, it demonstrates that. And God rewards her uh, with a new husband. His name is Boaz. And he was the son of Obed, and uh, a position in the lineage of David, and then all the way down to Christ. And the penman of this book uh, is unknown, not sure who it is, we're not going to speculate. It could be, they say, Samuel, or it could be Nathan, we're not sure. But uh, I just know that God wrote it, and that's all we need to know. Uh, he's the author, so uh, he told them what to write. According to uh, Merle F. Unger, and he was a Bible commentary, uh, uh, commentator, uh, he was also a scholar, an archaeologist, and a theologian. And he died in 1980. Uh, the time of the writing of the book of Ruth, he says, was during the uh, rule of Judges. And uh, that's seen true by reading verse 1. Notice what it says in Ruth 1.1. Now it, was, it came to pass that in the days when the judges ruled, and what was taking place is that Israel would go into sin, they would begin to cry out to God, and God would raise up a judge to bring them back to where they need to be. And so, uh, very interesting book. And uh, if you compare uh, the book of Judges to our day, uh, we see much of the same thing. Uh, two places in the book of Judges, uh, it says this, Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. And boy, do we see that today. Pride is a big problem. So uh, this was a time when the judges ruled. And uh, we know this book is placed there by God uh, in the canon of the Scriptures. Uh, it's right in the right place. You say, well, why did they put it between Judges and the book of Samuel? Well, uh, God's contrasting things here. Uh, between Judges and Ruth and the book of Samuel. Ruth is right in the middle of... And it gives us a little break from what's going on. And then Samuel's uh, going to take off and show some things there. 
Judges and the books of Samuel are filled with wars and conflict and conquest. The book of Ruth is filled with uh, calmer tenure and uh, comes as a relief from uh, hard and stern dealings. Instead of hatred, there's going, you're going to find love. Instead of military life, you're going to find a family life. Instead of battlefields, you're going to find grain fields. Instead of uh, attack and counterattack, there's going to be understanding. And there's also a courtship and marriage here. And uh, under uh, Jewish conditions, uh, she followed the letter uh, of uh, what uh, Naomi told her to do, and uh, it all turned out well. And the book of Ruth is concerned with the subject of the kinsman redeemer. And this is a picture uh, of redemption. Uh, the result of redemption is restoration. Uh, the nation of Israel is going to be restored. And the result of our redemption is that we're restored to fellowship with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. And He is a uh, kinsman redeemer. And uh, there are three women that's going to be prominent in this book. And uh, Naomi, and she's the grieving widow. We're going to see Ruth, who's the sacrificing woman. And then we're going to see uh, Orpha, the leaving widow. And uh, another commentator put it this way, Naomi the sensible woman, Ruth the cleaving woman, and Ortha the sensitive woman. She wanted to go back to the sensual things of life and go back uh, to her country. Uh, in Ruth's background, as a Moabite, uh, we see uh, very clearly the grace of God displayed uh, unto her. Uh, the Moabite people began, you'll remember, back in Genesis 19. Uh, in Genesis 19.35, uh, this is the story of Lot, of course, <coughs> and uh, his two daughters. And uh, uh, the Moabites were uh, a product of their incest with their father. Notice what it says. They made their father to drink wine that night also, and the younger arose and lay with him, and uh, he perceived not when she lay down, nor when she arose. Thus were both the daughters of Lot with child by their father. Uh, and verse 37, And the firstborn bare a son, and called his name Moab, and the same as uh, the father of a Moabites unto this day. Uh, so uh, this is where the Moabites came from. Uh, Deuteronomy 32, uh, 23, 2 says this, and I've heard people use this, uh, and uh, again, you can do a lot of damage with Scripture trying to make it mean what you want it to mean. Uh, Deuteronomy 23, 2 says, A bastard shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord, even to his tenth generation shall he not enter into the congregation of the Lord. And I've heard people uh, talk about women who have children out of wedlock. It's known as a bastard child. And they've told them that they can't, uh, they can't get saved. And boy, what a, what a uh, you know, a heresy. And so... Uh, uh, man, you've got to be careful uh, what you hear today. So we see that Ruth was a descendant of Moab. And uh, another study of the book of Ruth shows Boaz to be the product of incest also. Uh, Isaac begot Jacob, and Jacob begot Judah, and Judah begot uh, Pharaz uh, by incest with his daughter-in-law uh, over in Genesis 38. Uh, he was supposed to give her uh, one of his sons to raise up seed to his brother, and he didn't. And uh, she turned the tables on him, and uh, that's how that came about. Uh, in Matthew 1.1, 1, 1, you'll find the genealogy of Jesus Christ, and uh, down through verse 5, and this is where we find uh, both Boaz and Ruth mentioned. The Bible says, The book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham begot Isaac, and Isaac begot Jacob, and Jacob begot Judas and his brethren. Uh, verse 3, And Judas begot Phares, and Zerah uh, of uh, Thamar, and uh, Pharaoh begot uh, Ezram, and Ezram begot Aram. Aram begot, uh, begot uh, Abinadab, and Abinadab begot Naasson, and Naasson begot Salmon. And uh, Salmon begot Boaz of Rechab, and uh, Boaz uh, begot uh, Obed of Ruth. Now, uh, I'm going to get on a little rant right here. I saw a lady today interviewed... And she said we need to take the word man out of uh, our English language. That things are changing. And uh, 
he said, uh, well, you're called a woman. And she said, well, I'd rather be called a person. And she said, calling me a woman is offensive to me. And I thought, somebody smack her. I mean, this is the stupidity of the world. And she said we are to be called uh, uh, not humankind, because it's got man in it, but we all ought to be called persons. Uh, I just got to quit. Man, let's get back to the book of Ruth. So Ruth and Boaz were both the descendants of incest, and in studying the first chapter of Matthew, we find that Christ was identified with the fallen race of people. And uh, does that tell you anything about us? We were a fallen race. And yet God loved us and God showed us grace and God saved us. And you'll notice in the Bible, and this took place several years ago, they tried to neuter the Bible and uh, make God non-gender. And of course now that's coming to pass. And uh, you know... Uh, if you can't decide whether you're a man or a woman, there's something wrong, something bad wrong. But uh, God, when He gives the genealogy, there's very few times that He mentions women in the genealogy. And Ruth is one of them. And then you'll find Rahab the harlot is another. So both pictures of God's grace and what God can do. Now, Ruth is a picture of the Gentile bride and Boaz a picture of Christ. And there are four scenes concerning Ruth uh, in the book of Ruth. In uh, chapter number 1, verses 1 through 18, Ruth in the country of Moab. And then in chapter number 1, verses 19 through chapter 2, verse 23, Ruth in the harvest field of Bethlehem. And then uh, the third uh, division, Ruth in the threshing floor of Boaz, chapter 3, verses 1 through 18. And then Ruth... In the home of Boaz, chapter number 4, verses 1 through 22. And the kinsman redeemer uh, in Ruth speaks of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the kinsman redeemer had to be related. He had to be rich and he had to be ready. Amen. And so Boaz qualified. And so does the Lord Jesus Christ. He's rich. He's related because he identifies himself with man. He was born of a woman and he's ready. And let me say also, he's able. Boaz was all these and was a type of the kinsman redeemer, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, let's look at some other information here uh, that's related to that. Related. Uh, you had to be related to the family in order to redeem them. In Leviticus, we find this in chapter number 25, verses 48 and 49. The Bible says, after that he is sold, he may redeem again one of his brethren may redeem him. Either his uncle or his uncle's son may redeem him, or any that is nigh of his kin unto him of his family may redeem him, or if he be able, he may redeem himself. Then in Hebrews chapter number 2, verse 14, the Bible says, For as much then as ye are the partakers of... Uh, for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also likewise took a part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power over death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. So we were a lost race, we were in bondage, Christ took upon himself the form of flesh and uh, therefore identified himself with mankind and uh, was able to save us. Then Rich, in chapter number uh, 2 of the book of Ruth, verse 1, the Bible says, And Naomi had a kinsman of her husband, a mighty man of wealth of the family of Elimelech, and his name was Boaz. Now, you're going to find when we get into the study of Ruth, there was one who was closer, but that one who was closer had to be willing to redeem. And he, he, he wasn't going to do anything with a Gentile, so it fell to Boaz. And so Boaz was able to do that. Now, we have to have one that's able to redeem. Amen? The Bible says in 1 Peter 1, 18, For as much as you know that you were not redeemed by corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation, received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, 
as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. That's how we were redeemed. And I'm glad for that. Then, not only was he to be rich, not only was he to be related, but he was also to be ready. In Ruth 3.11, the Bible says, And now, my daughter, fear not, I will do to thee all that thou requirest, for all the city of my people doth know that thou art a virtuous woman. So, he was ready to redeem her. He, he took his rightful place, and he was able to do that. Uh, Jesus took his rightful place, and he was able to redeem us. In John 10, 17 and 18, the Bible says, Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down to myself. I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it again. This commandment have I received of the Father. Thank God that we have a kinsman redeemer. Then the key uh, to the book of Ruth is the kinsman redeemer. And uh, uh, this is the same word, uh, Hebrew word, uh, G-O-E-L, and it appears 13 times in the book of Ruth. Uh, G-O-E-L, a goal I guess that is, means one who redeems. And uh, redeeming is done by paying the full price. I, I love that song, Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. And so the kinsman redeemer, uh, redeemer's rights is to redeem a person or property. In Ruth's case, the kinsman redeemer had to buy uh, Naomi's property back and marry Ruth and do the part of, uh, of, of a brother, which was uh, to raise up a son to carry her husband's name on. So uh, that's what he was willing to do. He was willing to take that step. Uh, the key verses uh, in Ruth are verses 1, verse 16, and chapter 3, verse 11. Uh, look at chapter 1, verse 16. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go, and whither thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people. And here's the, here's the thought, My God, uh, thy God, my God. Uh, she was willing, willing to, to follow after Naomi. Then in chapter 3, verse 11, the Bible says, And now, my daughter, fear not, I will do to thee all that thou requirest. Of course, that's Boaz talking to Ruth. He said, For all the city of my people doth know that thou art a virtuous woman. Then the key chapter is uh, Ruth chapter number 4. And uh, in uh, these verses, 22 verses, Ruth moves from widowhood to, uh, and poverty to marriage and wealth. That's where we're going to go. We're going to leave here one day. Uh, you say, well, I'm rich in this world. Well, what if a man is, what is profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul, or what shall he give in exchange for his soul? Uh, I'm going to be rich in the things of God. Amen? Rather than the things of the world. Uh, in exercising the law, uh, regulating the redemption of the property, and we read that over in Leviticus 25, and the law concerning uh, a brother's duty to raise up seed to the name of the deceased, in uh, chapter number 25 of Deuteronomy, verses 5 through 10, Boaz bought a Moabite woman into the family uh, and the line of David, uh, which was the line of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, Ruth, uh, let's give you a little uh, analyzing of the book here. Uh, analyzing this book depends on the approach that one takes uh, to the book. And a fellow by the name of C.W. Fleming, Fleming gives, uh, or Slimming, S-L-E-M-M-I-N-G, gives four different approaches to the book as follows. Uh, chapter 1, you see backsliding. Uh, you preachers might well write that down. You might want to preach this. Chapter 2, you see returning. Chapter 3, you see restoration. Chapter 4, you see fruitfulness. Then uh, another uh, analyzation of the book, uh, you see in chapter 1, deciding. Chapter 2, you see serving. Chapter 3, you see resting. And chapter 4, you see reward. Then another analyzation of the book he gives, a wise choice, chapter 1, a humble industry, chapter number 2, 
accepting advice in chapter number 3. That's when she took advice from Naomi on what to do. And then chapter 4, highly exalted. Then his uh, fourth annotation, uh, chapter 1 in Moab, chapter 2 in Bethlehem, chapter 3 into Israel, and then chapter 4 into the royal life. And uh, the, the book can be dealt with from uh, two or three different points. First, it can be uh, looked at from a historical standpoint. Uh, this story uh, is reality and life of the individuals uh, that happened and what happened to them in the past. And uh, this is not a make-believe story. This is a true story that came uh, from the hand of God. Then dis dispensational standpoint, uh, in this book it describes the Jewish nation going away from God and God cut the nation off and then grafted in the Gentiles. Uh, you see that in the New Testament as well. Then uh, the typical uh, standpoint, uh, this has to do with God's plan of redemption for mankind. Uh, Naomi speaks of the nation of Israel. That's who she represents. Ruth and Orpha speaks of the Gentiles. Uh, Boaz speaks of Christ paying the full price of redemption. And uh, both Jew and Gentile when he died on the cross of Calvary. And uh, then he takes a Gentile bride. We're going to leave here one day. and Boy, I'm glad I'm part of the bride. Uh, many other approaches can be taken. Uh, however, we'll deal with this book uh, in this manner. Number one, uh, we're going to look at the pain of Naomi in chapter number one. In uh, chapter number two, we're going to look at the participation of Ruth. In chapter number three, we're going to look at the proclamation of Boaz. And then in chapter number four, we're going to look at the preciousness of the bridegroom uh, in chapter number four. All right. Now, uh, we're going to give you that little bit of introduction tonight. Guess what? You're going to get out early. Get all your answers down. All right, let's pray, and we'll let you go tonight, and we'll get into chapter number 2 next week, and we'll look at the first five verses. I believe that's how many we'll get, maybe. So uh, let's pray, and then we'll go to the house. Father, again, thank you tonight for our time together, and Lord, I know the class was brief tonight, but uh, given this introduction, we pray that you'll bless, pray that uh, you'll guide and direct in our lives, help us to... Uh, learn and to glean from this book, and again, to grow in the grace and knowledge of Christ, to be a light and a witness for Him. Bless uh, the students as they leave tonight. Keep us safe as we travel. Bless Brother Shoemate. Watch over and protect him and the mission team, and bring them home safely. Guide us and direct us now. We'll give you praise for what you do. In Jesus' name, amen.